After Party is a spiritual successor to Oxenfree, a game that was known for its great and riveting storytelling. Its branching path conversations led to multiple endings that encourage gamers to constantly replay and hyper-analyze every one of their choices. After Party feels like a natural progression of that. I'm going to tiptoe my way around this section as After Party is a game that should be played without knowing anything beyond the basic plot. You play as a pair of friends, Milo and Lola. Where Lola is a bit bolder and stern, Milo is traditionally the shy and reserved one. The two find themselves in hell where they can't recall how they died but just know something happened to themselves and now they're stuck in hell. Luckily for them, Saiyan seems like a chill dude and he has a loophole for people of hell. If you can outdrink him, you can go back to Earth. Without giving away too much, it's a narrative backdrop that quickly spirals out of control with a long quest coming out of a simple drinking game. It's a fun adventure though, one filled with plenty of humor and thought-provoking conversations that left me constantly second-guessing if I made the right choice. That's the thing though, there isn't a right choice, just multiple different choices. Lola and Milo have a complex history, one that isn't apparent from the get-go. As you learn more about them and seemingly yourself, you'll begin to connect the dots on who exactly Milo and Lola were before they died and how that realization shapes the future. Very much like Oxenfree, After Party follows the approach of keeping gameplay simple and inviting while investing more in writing and story. One of my major complaints when playing Oxenfree was the lack of gameplay elements, and that's why it's surprising to see After Party continue to focus more on story rather than gameplay. I feel like Oxenfree had more interactive gameplay elements than After Party. That title was more puzzle focused than this was, where After Party feels more like an interactive story. With that said, that's not a knock on the package because After Party is captivating with an interesting story and characters that I continuously wanted to learn more about. As for its gameplay, they come in the form of conversations and drinking games. Conversations usually give you two choices in any given scenario. Depending on your choice, you could cut one relationship or blossom another. Where After Party starts to go off the beaten path is with its drinking mechanics. In hell, people are always drinking, trying to make the best of where they are now, and while those themes and issues are tackled in its story, it's also in its gameplay. Each cocktail has a theme to it that affects your mood while drunk. Some will make you bolder, more rational, or even just flirtier. Those then bring up new options and conversations that lead up to some interesting events. Likewise, with all the drinking comes competitions at the bar. These games are simple in premise, like beer pong or just stacking cups while drunk. They never really flesh out to anything more than what I'd consider as a minigame, but they do provide a nice change of pace to the campaign. Overall, I found After Party to be a very tranquil experience, one to easily breeze through in terms of gameplay. I do wish there was more to do here outside of just giving my choices to conversations. Certain scenarios introduce some moments of interaction, but they're far and few between. After Party feels like an evolution of the art style started in Oxenfree. The wide-angle camera shots return to not only show the characters, but the vastly interesting new world this story takes place in. While everyone has their own beliefs and expectations of what a hell would look like, Hell and After Party looks like any other rundown part of Los Angeles, only with demons, fire, and a lot of death. The way the artist designed the world made it feel more fun to explore, despite me being only limited to walking in the foreground. I would constantly pause and look at the different elements in the background, and was pleasantly surprised when some of those elements made their way into the story dialogue. After Party is also entirely made in 3D, but shown to you in a 2D perspective, building off the mostly flat look of Oxenfree. The transition to a 3D environment with an improved lighting system helped create these beautiful looking set pieces upon entering a new location for the first time. Despite its beautiful presentation, After Party does stumble into a few hiccups with performance. I played primarily on PC and Xbox One, and though I do want to know, I was playing an in-development version on PC, so that was continuously updated while I was playing this for review. The console experience seemed like the more polished option though. I still ran into a few stutters and frame rate dips in between entering new areas. On PC, however, I ran into way more bugs than anything. For example, like where a text message I'd received would stay on screen despite me dismissing it. It wasn't until an exit to the main menu and back that it disappeared. The models of characters would also seem oddly rigged. For example, sometimes watching Milo and Lola drink looked like their head had snapped off. Satan's cape would also continuously go through himself in one scene. Little hitches like that would occasionally just snap me out of the moment that I was trying to immerse myself in. While it didn't ruin the experience as a whole, it did get me the laugh for cringe in some moments that were meant to be serious, ruining the tone of the moment. After Party masterfully crafts together a cast of fantastic actors to play the roles of Milo, Lola, Satan, and just about everything else. Janina Gavin Carr slays her role as Lola, a strong and blunt woman that is ready for the next step in her life. Koi Dao as Milo is wonderfully done, capturing his timid personality while also performing his more irrational drunk one too. Dave Fanoi, who you might recognize as Lee from the Walking Dead series, is a surprisingly chill and laid-back Satan. He gives off the power vibe you'd expect from a high figure like that, yet manages to make himself feel approachable. 
Without going down the list of everyone involved though, I'll just say that everyone attached to this project does a stellar job with their performance, creating an entertaining and believable environment. The amazing voice work is accompanied by a catchy soundtrack that feels like it belongs in a Halloween themed bar or nightclub. It's very fitting for a game about drinking in hell. I certainly found myself listening to the main menu theme and the end credit song a few times while playing this for review. In fact, the end credit song is most likely the song you'll be hearing throughout this review, just because I like it that much. After Party is a game that you can easily knock out in a weekend, but are just as likely to replay more than once for the multiple scenarios. Much like Oxenfree, it's a game more about its story than its gameplay. Some parts have been fleshed out to be more interactive with this spiritual successor, but much like my experience with Oxenfree, I feel like more could have been done with the gameplay. I still really enjoyed the story, and it's sort of hinted at that major gameplay changes will come in another project, but for what it is now, After Party is a fun way to spend 4-5 hours. Go get yourself some friends around the couch and have a co-op playthrough.